Tom Limbong, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's start with the reform agenda. It's made a lot of ground, but are you looking at an acceleration of the reform agenda, or is there a bit of a pause? Well, the good news and the bad news is that we're probably in the midst of a bit of a pause right now. <clears throat> and uh, that had a lot to do with the Jakarta governor election, which uh, turned uh, unexpectedly nasty. Uh, but uh, it'll be over soon. Uh, it has clearly proved to be a distraction uh, that has caused uh, the reform momentum to flag, uh, I have to admit, in, in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, the good news is that the uh, final runoff of the Jakarta governor election is coming up April 19, and I fully expect, and the president in public remarks has, has confidently predicted we will return to the economic reform agenda. The tax amnesty ends at the end of this month. Has it been a success? Well, uh, based on uh, most metrics, uh, Deutsche Bank has done the analysis, and it still stands as the most successful tax amnesty in world history. Um, having said that, I think uh, it also sets a fresh, a fresh expectation uh, that, okay, that was the star of the show in 2016. Uh, what's next? It right? was the star of the show in 2017, in 2018, and so on. And that, again, comes back to uh, maintaining the reform momentum. right? Uh, in investment banking, we always say we're only as good as our last deal, right? So what's, what's next is, is going to be the question. Ease of doing business is an issue, and, and Indonesia has improved in ease of doing business. Do you expect, are you looking for a further improvement going up that scale? Absolutely. Uh, there's no question. Um, the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Index has uh, 10 components, <clears throat> and uh, if you break it down into those 10 components, there's a number where we've made big strides, and there's quite a few where we still rank uh, badly. Uh, so there's actually still plenty of room for improvement, uh, and we're confident that we'll see further gains this year uh, and, and next year. Ratings agencies are looking more positively uh, on Indonesia. You must be very pleased about that. Yes, uh, indeed. So uh, Fitch upgraded our outlook from stable to positive in December and Moody's followed suit in January. Um, certainly on all the macro indicators, current account surplus, sorry, current account deficit is shr shrunk, our uh, currency has strengthened, our hard currency reserves at the Central Bank are up by easily 20% over the last six months, uh, so all the uh, macro indicators have turned positive. Um, and uh, Indonesia is a commodities intensive economy as you know, uh, so the cyclical upswing we see all around the world uh, is, is beneficial for Indonesia at this time. Mm. You obviously run the investment portfolio and investment, uh, foreign and domestic has improved dramatically. I think the number is about 12.4% in the final quarter. Are you expecting that growth rate to continue throughout 2017 and beyond? Um, we do, uh, Michael. Um, remarkably, <clears throat> if we achieve our target of another year of 12% growth this year in nominal rupiah, then over the last four years, uh, foreign direct investment plus domestic investment will have grown by around 50% uh, in rupiah nominal terms over, over the last four years. Uh, and again, I think uh, it's testimony to the uh, flexible economy that we have, right? That essentially given uh, first the commodities price crash, uh, and then, you know, other shifts uh, around the region, like China's shift towards a more uh, domestic consumer economy. Um, you know, our exchange rate adjusted, uh, our economy is adjusting, um, and uh, our economy went from being very commodities dependent to now being much more investment driven. Uh, so there's been a relatively successful transition uh, and obviously, we're, we're working very hard to continue to push that, uh, that transition to the investment uh, uh, as kind of the uh, economic growth driver. Clearly, infrastructure has to be a focus for you. I mean, the ADB has put out numbers recently, $26 trillion needed in investment, and, and, and Indonesia needs some. Uh, are you satisfied with the, the pace of growth of investment in investment? <coughs> in Not at all. <coughs> That's an excellent point, uh, Michael. 
And uh, I, for sure, continue to believe that there remains tremendous opportunity to improve on that front. Uh, I feel that uh, uh, we've made very little progress, as a matter of fact, in infrastructure finance, um, certainly in Indonesia and arguably across the region. Uh, infrastructure is still excessively funded by state budgets mm -hmm. uh, rather than by private sector. Um, <clears throat> and uh, my personal hope is that uh, this year and next year, uh, with a lot of potential crises out of the way, uh, we can begin to finally turn our attentions to cracking the code, if you will, uh, for uh, public-private partnerships, for uh, securitization, for other financial innovations that finally uh, get private sector finance into infrastructure programs. Tom Nambong, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Michael.